I just lost my tumbler virginity. And it wasn't a nice experience. There were too many holes. Right, we are back and I am definitely stepping out of my comfort zone for this one. I'm really, really nervous. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I'm going to try and make a tumbler. <laughs> so I have an idea in mind. I do want to do like a galaxy effect. I bought white ones because I do want to create different um, different designs, mainly with alcohol inks. What I'm going to need to do, I would take you outside and show you this stage, but it is raining. But to prepare this, I want to sand this down and I'm just going to, I've got some black, matte black spray paint. So I'm gonna give this a light sand with some 600 grit sandpaper just a light sand just to help the paint bond to the tumbler and then i think things are just going to get messy again i've never done this before don't judge me <laughs> i could have got to watch loads of videos on this i have watched some in the past but not in depth more because they looked amazing not for how they're done so forgive me if i go a bit wrong so I've already fudged it up. As I mentioned, it was raining a little bit outside. Uh, don't, 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 <laughs> don't spray paint in the rain, will you? I've got some white speckles. Nothing to worry about too much. I mean, if anything, they're going to look a little bit like stars. Oh, is that fully dry? Yeah, I don't care. So I'm just gonna mix up some of my collab resin, the Lex Resin collab resin. And then, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what we're going to do next, but I know I need some of that stuff. <laughs> Are bubbles going to matter? I'm going to be using a heat gun, aren't I? I could run it through the airless, but I don't see the point because I, I think with a heat gun, they're just going to pop anyway, aren't they? So I think I need to begin with a black, although we've spray painted it black. That's mainly to stop the white from coming through. I'm trying to remember, I think I watched a video on Sherry Vegas do something like this quite a while ago, but I can't remember the process. I, I could pause it and go and watch it, but I, I like to just try and try and remember and just wing it. So I'm gonna use some black mica powder. I think. And I'm gonna Use some of the Marabou Rainbow Alcohol Ink. I want it to be quite dark. Yeah, we're going to use some of this stuff. Hopefully this will show through. I don't think I've got much left and it's hard to get hold of this stuff. Just add as much as I want. <laughs> Why not? What, what, could, what could go wrong? I could lose a tumbler. But then, as I learn, if it goes horribly bad, I could sand it and, and try again at a later date, I suppose. So th this, this part, I kind of know what I want to do. But I'm going to use alcohol inks. And I can't remember if I need to add like a white pigment paste to it first, or I add my alcohol inks and then add a white over the top. We're just going to see what happens. I don't know. And I think I need something underneath this in case it drips off. I think that would do. We might get some, some nice jewellery pieces also. <laughs> okay, let's turn it on. Some of the video might be sped up. I'm going to pop my mask on now and go into voiceover. Okay, we are in voiceover mode. You are really going to have to forgive me for this mess that you are about to see. So I'm pouring over my black resin with the marabou and watch what starts happening. I start pointing at them because I'm like, oh, you know, I've never experienced fish eyes before. Um, and I just thought, well, maybe if I loosen the resin, that then it would it would surely it would pass over and seal those up. But no. 
watch these get even worse. So I just think, well, I'm going to carry on and just see what happens. Hoping that things are just going to get better. <laughs> And then I start going in with my colours over the top. Magenta, and then I use a cerulean, a lemon yellow, and then an emerald green. I think I go with a purple, and yeah, it's just looking absolutely horrific. And I also went in with some more marabou for stars. Right, I've pulled my mask down for a moment. <laughs> I don't know what went wrong. Now, the interesting thing is, when I added the marabou, it started to separate the resin into these craters. But part of me thinks I should have sanded that black spray paint first. So there's possibly, you probably know the answer to this. There's two culprits, I think. One, I didn't sand it, so I'm a culprit. And two, possibly the marabou, alcohol ink, maybe it's gone off. But you can see these craters, I mean, they're not, they're not as bad as they were. I'm trying to go round and just touch them and try and close them, but they seem to be reopening and it's not really doing anything. That's telling me that it's either something on the spray paint or it's something that I've added, which is separating the, the resin. Is it salvageable? Look at the look at the effects though. This is exactly what I wanted. And I'm I'm terrible when it comes to visualizing and actually seeing what I'm doing. We've had this discussion on my channel before. My brain is telling me that it's not good enough. I, I really do suffer with with I don't I don't like what if I can see it. So the good thing about most of what we do on this channel is we can't see it until we demold it. But there's something embedded in my brain that, especially if it comes to like drawing and stuff like that, I don't like it if I can see it. But this, I actually really like it, even with these surface dimples that we've got. It adds some texture, but it's not, it's not what I wanted. Now I'm wondering whether I can, I can salvage this once it's dry. Maybe give it a light coat and or a sand and a light coat. Let's just see what happens. As always, massive shout out to my channel members, anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks. It's very, very much appreciated. I'm not gonna give up. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm gonna make this work. So what I've decided to do, it's only been a couple of minutes since I stopped. I'm just trying to add some clear into the worst areas. And I'm hoping that it's gonna self level um, over time. I tried not to go too crazy with the heat because that can flash cure the resin. So I'm hoping that this is just going to self level and get rid of those dimples. Again, I just don't know. Just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, it did. What happened? I presumed that it was safe to turn off the machine and the bottom was still a bit wet. <laughs> so what I decided to do was switch off the machine and I stood the tumbler up. And what has happened is that some of the semi-cured resin, I don't know whether you can see it, has dripped down. You can't really see it on camera. There you can, there, look. See that raised area there. Now, I did some research afterwards. I found a really, really good video by Art Dacity where she explains about the fish eyes and the issue. Now, I've been working with resin for some time, as you know. I do, I know about fish eyes, but I've never really experienced it because that's not normally my top coating and stuff like that is not normally my area. Although I have done it, but I've never experienced it. This is the first time I experienced it. So I was calling them dimples, they are dimples, but the technical name, as you know, is fish eyes. So what she explained is there's two reasons I think. I'm not saying it's the marabou now. I'm, I'm more, it's, it's user error. It's all my fault for being impatient. I sprayed the black. I think the issue is one of two things. I sprayed the matte black um, spray paint and I didn't let the spray paint degas. 
I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know. I mean, the can does say leave for 24 hours. I didn't, so I was impatient. And what, what's happening as the, the spray paint is still drying, it looks dry, but it's, it's releasing a gas. So when I've put my epoxy on, the gas, the gases from the spray paint have, have found weak points and they've opened up these areas. Now the other thing could have been that it wasn't that and that I just didn't put enough epoxy on and it's just begun to separate, but it could be both. Now I have options. I keep it as it is because I do like it still, even with its imperfections. I really do like the design you know, it's something that I've made that I can keep and look back on and think, you know, this is what you did wrong, Dan. Don't do this again. But then that's not very helpful to you guys, is it? I mean, as much as I'd want to keep it the way it is, we do, we do. I think we do need to fix it. So I have some options. I either try and top coat this and put a bit more resin on, but then I don't think it's going to be perfect. I sand it down, but it's going to take an incredible amount of sanding, I think. I have an option where I could fill all these dimples with UV resin really fast and easy. It's going to be time consuming. Try and level those off and then give it a light sand and then give it a glaze coat, which I think would be the best option. But I'm going to take a few minutes just to think about what I could do. I mean, I could highlight these areas with maybe a gold or something like that. I mean, there's plenty of options and ways around this. But look at some of these areas where I shine a UV torch on. Some of the colors are muddied, but it, it really does look like a galaxy formation. I can't remember the name of the, the famous formation. I think it's the hand that's that color. But it really does. I really am happy with it. So another issue could have been that I touched the surface, which has should really clean it with isopropyl or not even touch it before you start to apply your epoxy. Again, I'm I'm very new to <laughs> very new to this. So I'm just rubbing it all down and cleaning the whole lot, trying to get into all of these fish eyes with the alcohol before I even commit to anything else. I could be cleaning it before I even sand it. I don't know yet. <laughs> I mean, look, it's, it's, it's getting even worse now. Look, where those fish eyes were, it's taken away the spray paint. <laughs> Oh come on. I feel like scrapping the whole lot and starting again, but that wouldn't be that wouldn't be a true video, would it? So by doing that it's actually showing me the areas that I need to work on a bit better because now they're white. So I'm gonna try something similar to is it kin kintsugi using a gold leaf. So it's it's going to make it look a bit better, <laughs> but it's also going to remind me of how not to do it again. Just using some black UV resin, this is going to take a little bit of patience, guys, but it's for me. And I'm going to park cure this and then apply a gold leaf so it bonds and brush off the excess. At least I hope anyway. So I should now be able to lay my leaf onto that part cured resin. Like so. And then brush off that excess. It also gives the gold a really smooth finish. You can see that. Let's use a better brush. It's going to be covered anyway. There you go. So I'm just going to take a bit of time. It's, it's therapeutic time. I don't mind. These things are so, so handy. They really are. I do 
I really do suggest getting one. So I'm just taking off as much of the excess as I can. I'm gonna give it a, another clean over with some isopropyl, but I'm loving this. It took me just over half an hour, but I think it was worth it. Just really highlighting the, the mistakes that I made. I'm just going over with that rubbing alcohol just to remove any bits that shouldn't really be there. I missed a step, didn't I? I would jump so far ahead thinking, what can I do with these dimples that I should have sanded it first, ready to top coat. The issue is, this is going really, really, really pear shaped. If I sand this now, I'm gonna remove the gold that looking at now, I'm not overly keen on, but I'm just gonna keep it because I've done it now. I'm wondering if I can just make it even worse by top coating it with UV resin. Hopefully I can cure it before any more fish eyes because the epoxy is not gonna bond properly because I didn't sand it. So there I am thinking, oh, I can show you how to salvage something, but in the long run, don't do it the way that I've done it. It's just, it's not gonna work. <laughs> But it's for me and I want to make it look nice. And voiceover Dan is back. I did warn you guys, I did say this was going to be a bad video. But I'm trying. <laughs> I've poured on quite a bit of UV resin and I'm just using my Magic Cure UV light just on a low setting and then increasing it gradually over 60 minute periods just to make sure. I'm actually really impressed with the finish. It's leveled out really nicely. A lot of the imperfections down here are now gone. It's it's nice and shiny. Again, UV resin not ideal, I suppose, but it is what it is. Right, so for <laughs> a very long-winded first attempt, it's not brilliant, is it, guys? It's okay. The the galaxy effect is what I wanted, and I've got that. Let me see if I can get some better light. That's better. It's still got some imperfections. I'm not overly happy with the gold, but again, it just it's a reminder. But the glaze finish is really, really nice, and the bottom is no more as bad. It's not as bad as it was. There you go, that is how not to make your first tumbler. And lesson learned, don't be stubborn like me. Go and check out other artists' videos where they show how to do it properly so you avoid these mistakes. I must, must give in and not think that I can just jump into something and try it. <laughs> because I created a lot of work for myself by doing that. Anyway, as always, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment if you haven't subbed. Hit that button for me. Lesson learned. Until the next one. <laughs> I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.